Hello, great YouTubers. Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll look at how to link our Step 7 program to the Interscada software. Let's get started. Before we do, kindly subscribe if you've not done that already and also press on the notification bell so that you always be notified whenever I upload. Also give me a thumbs up if you are really benefiting from this tutorial series. Okay, so we move on. Let's look at the softwares that we need to implement this. Okay, so we have our setup here, how our connection is going to be like or the softwares that we will need to do this uh, connections. All right, so first of all, we will need the PLC SIM because we'll be using the simulator. So if you've not done the installation of the step 7 software, then you need to visit my getting started with step 7 to do that installation. And then you have the PLC SIM software installed as well. Then we will have the S7 online link between another software we term as the net to PLC SIM. So basically this software is to act as a bridge between our PLC SIM IP and then the IP of the laptop that we'll be using for our simulation. So this particular software will serve as a bridge and then we will have another software because we'll be using OPC for the data collection and then data exchange between the S7 PLC and then the Interscada. We will be needing the Capware software that's the OPC software. And then from there we already have our Interscada software already installed so we can go ahead then. And then see how we can download these two software and then look at the configuration okay so to download the capware software we need to go to this website which i will provide the link below you click on it and then you have this page open and then you click on this particular link to start the download okay then you click save to download okay so after the download the next software we need to download is the net to plc sim so you go to this sourceforge website which i'll provide the link below and then you have this uh, tab that you can click to start the download so i click on it okay. download started okay so after the download you need to run the cap server software to get the opc server running on your machine so you right click and then run as administrator So after the installation you have this icon on your desktop or you can also search for it from the program list all right so we have our opc server installed we will not run it for now we then have to move on and then create our step 7 project so to do that we will create a simple project so i will start the schematic manager okay so we will create a simple project so i click on next and then you make sure that you choose a plc that is have an industrial internet accessibility or have the ability to communicate with industrial internet so we choose this particular cpu pn slash dp and i click on next and then the language i choose ladder click on next and then we can give it a project name so we can say test underscore opc you can give it any name that you want and then you can click on finish okay so we have our project created and then we can look at our station we have our station 300 and then our block also will be one created okay if you want more details you can visit my previous tutorial on the getting started with step 7 so we now need to activate the simulator so i come here and then click on the simulator 
Okay, so we can see that our simulator is opened. We then need to download the program into the simulator. So let me minimize the simulator. And then I can go back to the program, click on the Sematic 300 station, right click and then go to PLC and say download. So if everything is fine, if your connection to the Sematic simulator is okay, you should be able to download. So we can then go to our blog and then create our first project. Okay. So here we can create a simple project. So I'll bring a, a normally open contact and then I'll bring an input I 0.0, .0. and then I'll bring an output equal. Well, I'll write into a memory location which is going to be m0. Dot, I'll use 0, .0 for this. Okay, so we have if this input is activated, we should get a data logic one coming into our DB, and then we can be able to read this particular DB at the SCADA side. Okay, let me create the next network. You click on Control R, and then I will create uh, an analog data. So I will go to the move command, bring move. And then I would like to key in some values and see whether it will change at the OPC side. That is the, so I'll use input word, input word two for this. And then I'll write this data into the memory, memory word. Let me use memory word four. Okay, great. We have this example as well. I create another network and then I create a simple direct online logic and we see how we can control it from the SCADA end. Okay, so from here, because we want to control it from the SCADA and instead of giving a physical input address, I will give a memory bits addresses. So I've already made use of M0.0, .0, so I have 0, M0.1, available, M0.2. I need to bring my coil, and then this will energize a physical output that can control anything, a pump or anything. So this can be Q. Let's say 4.0 and then this output needs to hold our circuit on. This is a simple direct online. So repeat the same address here. Okay. So we have our start command, we have our stop, and then we have an output and then our hold on. Okay, so we are done with the programming. We can click on save and then download. Alright, so our program is in our PLC now. Let's test whether the PLC can communicate. Simulator started. Okay. So if we look at our input 0, 0.0, this is my input I've inserted. So if I go online, we can see our program is running. Okay, if we are to test, if I click on 0, 0.0, .0 we can see the output coming on. Logic 1, good. If we are to test, uh, analog the input is input word 2 so input word 2 I've specified here and then if I key in a value let's say 50 we can see that I'm having a value here but the format is not a form that we can see so we can right click go to representation and then we choose the small so that we can see the actual number we can see 50 there all right let's try our direct online so I will insert a memory so our memory bits our stop is 0 0.2, I need to close it. Our start is 0 0.1, so if I start, really it can start. And then if I open, it stops and then stop can go. Okay, so our logic is tested, it's working fine. We can then go offline and then establish the connection between this particular program and then the OPC server. And the next thing I need to run is to go to my download site and then run the net to plc sim so what you need to do is to right click and then run as administrator if you don't run as administrator this is not going to work click on yes click on yes and then it will start connecting okay so after connecting you click on ok you can confirm your connection again by going to tools and say get port 102 okay worked fine then we can go to add to add our items now 
so we can see from here that we have the network IP address and then we have the PO system IP address okay so we click on the network IP address it should be able to read all our IPs on this machine basically if you are not connected to any network then you need to configure or you need to set up your IP manually so let me show you quickly if you go to settings if you come to internet network we go to change adapter options and then I come to my internet network connection I double click on it and then I go to the protocol version 4 I should be able to specify the IP address that I want to use for the the net to sim POC simulation but for now I'm connected to my Wi-Fi so I'll use the the IP that my router provides and you can always confirm your IP by going to command IP config and then we can see that my wireless connection this is my IP this is the particular IP that I'm going to direct to the net to PLC Pro okay so with those checks we can go here and then I can select that this particular one is what I want to use so I click on it and then I click on OK and then the PLC SIM IP I can also confirm if I click here I can see this and we can see that if we come to the simulator we should be able to confirm the IP 192.168.0.1 so we can select this and then click on OK then we can say start server to start run we can see that now this software has caused a breach between our simulator IP and then this particular physical IP on our computer. We can also confirm the IP address of our PLC by going to the hardware. Okay, so at the hardware, if I open the Ethernet connection points, I can see that the IP is specified here. Perfect. I can close the hardware configuration okay so with this connection established we can go to the the opc server the cap west server now and then run it so i minimize this okay so i go to the icon and then run it okay so with the software started this is how the interface looks like so we need to establish a channel so we click here and then we can give it a name so this can be our segments we move to next device drivers we need to select Siemens so basically because we are using the TCP IP connection point so Siemens TCP IP Ethernet so we select and then we move to next default adapter then we need to specify the IP address that we used that is the IP address of our computer which was 80.100 so I click on it and then move to next okay so from here you move to next again next okay so our device is created now we need to then click on it again and then we have to specify where we are connecting to so we see s7 device name so our device we are using the 300 station so s7 300 not 200 and then we move to next and then we need to specify our ip here and it's 192.168.8.100 in your case it will be different it's particular this IP address here that we need to specify then I move to next 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 and then finish okay so we have a connection now so we can now add our tags so basically what we created here all these memories and then bits physical bits are what we can put them as tags in our OPC so I'll minimize this and then we come here you double click and then we create our first tag so for our first demonstration we have we need to we want to monitor the memory m0.0 so this is going to be my it's going to be a data tag so i'll say d underscore tag and then you come here you click on this to select the, the data type it's memory bit so m so it's going to be this that is memory bit 0.0, .0 and then it's a boolean and then you need to delete this okay so our first tag is m0.0 .0. so i click on this to verify and then we can see that this data type has changed to boo and then we can say apply and then okay okay so our first tag is created we can then create 
our next tag so we'll create our next tag so new tag and then this is going to be our analog data so a underscore tag you can give it any name and then I have to choose the data type okay so I have memory word here so I select it I said okay I have to delete this I remember it was memory word 4 that we used so I have to specify memory word 4 here and then I click on this correct sign and we can see where it is selected apply okay okay so we have these two tag let's confirm and see so if we can use this quick client to connect to the OPC after selecting you come to Smatic. this is what we created and these are our tags and we can see if I bring the simulator okay so we can see that uh, if I go online our memory bit 0, 0.0 it's 0 if I click on the input bits 1 0, 0.0 we can see here changes to zero and then we can see sorry to one and then we can see here one so let's observe this side goes to zero and one we can see that we are exchanging data between the opc and then when i change the analog yes let's say 70 and we can see it's changing perfect so we have a communication between our poc and then the opc server okay so the video is a bit lengthy, I have to divide it into two parts. So in the second part, we will look at the link between the OPC server and then the interscader. See you in the next part. Bye-bye.